Okay, in this recording we're going to discuss the topic of eigen equations. Now an operator is an object which when applied to a function generates a new function. So as an example we could um, discuss the operator dx which is another way of writing the operator d by dx, the, the first derivative operator, so that dx applied to um, sine x generates the, the derivative of sine x, which is cos x. So the derivative operator dx has, when applied to the sine x function, generate a different function cos x. Now for some operators and some functions you can write something of the following form that the operator when applied to the function generates not a different function but the same function multiplied by a number and that's called an eigen equation. So for each operator there may be one or more eigen functions which have this property that when you apply the operator to the function you get the same function back again but multiplied by a number. So we have an operator applied to the function generates the same function multiplied by a number and if a function has that property you call it an eigenfunction of the operator A in this case and with the eigenfunction comes this characteristic number called the eigenvalue. It may in general be complex, but it's just a number. So as an example of that, we can take the second derivative operator, dx squared, which is the same as the taking the second derivative. So for example, dx squared applied to the function sine x is the same as taking the first derivative of sine x and then applying the second dx to it to the result. The first dx applied to the sine x, the first derivative, we've already seen it, gives cos x. So we get here dx, the first derivative of cos x, and that's um, dx, uh, d by dx of cos x is minus sine x and that we can write as just minus 1 times sine x. So we have the structure of an eigen equation. We have an operator applied to the function sine x gives the same function sine x multiplied by a number. So in words we could write that as follows. We can say that sine x, the function sine x, is an eigenfunction of the operator dx squared with eigenvalue minus 1. In general, operators have many different eigenfunctions and with each eigenfunction goes this characteristic number, the eigenvalue. So operators have um, many eigenvalues, each one belonging to a different, in general, eigenfunction. There's one case which is particularly important in quantum mechanics, a particularly important example of this eigenfunction, eigen equation um, concept. And that's called the time independent Schrodinger equation. The time independent Schrodinger equation, which is one of the most important equations in quantum mechanics, is an eigen equation. In this case, the operator is the Hamiltonian, which is the operator for the energy. The eigen function of the Hamiltonian in one dimensional quantum mechanics here would be the wave function, so the quantum state. It's an eigen equation, so when we apply the Hamiltonian to the wave function, we get back the same wave function, but multiplied by a number. 
that number is denoted E and that's the energy of the quantum state. So we can write this equation by saying that the the quantum state function, the wave function, psi of x is an eigenfunction of the Hamiltonian H with eigenvalue E. And in general the Hamiltonian has several different eigenfunctions with different eigenvalues and it's very common in quantum theory to draw a diagram in which the energy is on the vertical axis and we draw several levels. These energy levels, these are just numbers arranged uh, along the energy axis. These represent numbers. These energy levels, these are simply the eigenvalues of the Hamiltonian. So when we write uh, an energy level diagram, what we're actually drawing there, what we're actually depicting, is the eigenvalues of the Hamiltonian.